Oh, well, hello and welcome everybody. Randy Replay, <clears throat> excuse me, back at it again. Your Minnesota Vikings have reached their bye week and it's Randy Replay's second favorite time of the year. The bye week extravaganza is here and we're going to get right on into it. Your Minnesota Vikings have $59 million in the cap salary. <clears throat> They do employ 52 out of 53 players on the roster. Halfway through, well, almost halfway through the NFL season, our offensive points per game were number three in the NFL. With 44.1 offensive passing yards per game, we're number four in the NFL with 455 and a half yards. And offensive rushing yards per game, we're fourth in the NFL with just under 145 yards a game uh defense it's very much different we're dead last in pretty much all categories that's okay uh the miami game <clears throat> coming off a very sour sour day it looked better coming down the stretch with anthony andrew gordon whatever his name is he's a unsung hero of that game at one point it was <clears throat> excuse me do you all hear that oh my gosh <laughs> Woo! the uh minnesota viking fan line coming alive here today um <clears throat> yeah three and three seven games in still own the top of the nfc north it could be worse it could be better but the green bay packers are one and five so that's that is what it is uh we're gonna go ahead and take a look at some it is what it is we can't show that so three <coughs> actually we could three two one. We're going to go ahead and look at some stats here. Kirk Cousins, halfway through the season, basically 2,573 yards. He is uh, 215 of 320. That is 67% completion percentage. For those of you that didn't know how to do math or simply didn't look over here, 18 touchdowns, 18 PX on the year with a QB rating of 86.8. Anthony Andrew Gordon with 385 yards. In uh, his one game played, 25 of 48, four touchdowns, three picks, and a 80.6 rating. So, uh, only sacked twice. Kirk Cousins, I do believe this is the most sacked quarterback in the NFL at 22. No, it's not. It's Justin Fields at 23. Trevor Lawrence and Kirk Cousins round out the top three. Oh, my heavens. Uh, we're going to go ahead and look at rushing. It is Dalvin Cook. Number one on this team with 150, uh, just shy of 150 carries, rather. Uh, in Gordon, we trust. Yes, indeed. The fans are speaking out. They want Andrew Anthony Gordon. <laughs> uh, 150 carries, 663 yards, six touchdowns, averaging 110 a game. Also has three fumbles all coming in the last two games. So hopefully the bye week, he resets his focus and he holds on to that ball. Longest run of 28. Uh, Cordero Patterson, 46 carries, 160 and a touchdown. Andrew Anthony Gordon, the aforementioned unsung hero down in Miami, waited and make it not look like a complete blowout. Uh, four carries, 41 yards, and KJ Osborne, one for five. Uh, Ty Chandler, three carries, four yards. He hasn't been doing much. Uh, Kirk Cousins, six for three. In the receiving game. In absence of J.J., Adam Thielen has become the guy here. 70 catches, 983 yards, and nine touchdowns through six games played. Holy moly. What a contribution from him showing that he can do it at an older age. I do believe he is 32 years of old. Years of age, rather? What the hell? Uh, K.J. Osborne, also longest catch on the team of 81 yards. I do believe that was in the Chicago game, if I'm not mistaken at home kj osborne 32 catches of 489 yards three touchdowns jj 31 catches 422 and four touchdowns <sighs> we get him back for the next game so look for him to get back into this play scheme and contribute uh tj hawkinson 29 catches one touchdown cordero patterson 18 catches and a touchdown um 29 catches 295 rather for Hawkinson Cordero Patterson 18 catches 174 and a touchdown Tyler Johnson who has come on as of late in absence of JJ everybody else is <clears throat> getting elevated 
And he has 13 catches, 155 and a touchdown. Jelani Woods, I do believe when uh, TJ Hawkinson exited a game, he got five catches, 62 yards. He has played in all six, but he's uh, more of the blocking tight end on that right side. Davlin Cook, 16 catches, 52 yards. Col Colin Johnson, rather, five catches, 47 yards. And Jalen Darden. The 5'8", great. One catch, 22 yards, and a touchdown in the Miami game. C.J. Ham 3 for 18 and a touchdown. Johnny Munt, 2 for 17. And Ty Chandler, 2 for 15. Nobody, nobody, nobody. And I mean, nobody cares about blocking. Going to go to defense and look at total tackles. And it's Jordan Hicks with 72. Now, we've been accustomed to seeing another name here. <coughs> that being Eric Hendricks. He is gone for the season. Got injured in the first game. And he's out for the year. So Jordan Hicks stepping up there in the middle linebacker spot. Javon Holland, new Minnesota Vikings, 62 tackles. Jalen Johnson is 53. Lewis Seen is 54. Troy Dye is 41. Uh, 44, rather, not 54. Troy Dye, 41. Trayvon Diggs and Taylor Rapp, who's only been with the team for two games. He has 38 tackles. Oh, my heavens. Uh, Carlton Davis with 35. Excuse me, I'm really gassy tonight. Daniel Hunter with 26. Z Z Z Zadarius with 24. Brian Asamo with 19. Harrison Phillips has 18. DJ Wanham has 16. Cam Bynum has 12. Dalvin Tomlinson and Josh Metellus have 11 apiece. Eric Kendricks, 10 tackles before exiting. Oh, boy. Uh, James Lynch with three. Patrick Jones with two. Danzler, Wilkis, and Otamawo each have one to speak of. Tackles for last, we've had a bunch here. Daniil Hunter leads the team with 11. Zadarius and DJ Wanham have six. Hicks and Phillips have four. Uh, excuse me, James Lynch has three. Javon Holland, Lewisine, Asamoah, and Tomlinson have two. Die, Diggs, Metellus, Kendricks, and Wilkis each have one. Sacks. Now this is where Randy... <laughs> Through seven, <laughs> six games played, three and a half sacks, Daniil Hunter leads the team. That's unacceptable. Absolutely unacceptable. This pass rush needs to get back there more often than three and a half times for Daniil Hunter. Oh, boy. Uh, Zadarius Smith and DJ Wanham each have three. Harrison Phillips has two and a half. James Lynch has one and a half. Down with Tomlinson and Troy Dye. <clears throat> each with a half sack between them. Uh, Trayvon Diggs, through six games, he's got seven picks. Oh, man. Uh, Taylor Rapp, new Minnesota Viking. I do believe these numbers were with L.A. He has two on the year. Javon Holland has two. Jordan Hicks, uh, Jalen Johnson, and Carlton Davis each have one. Pass deflections, we're, we're pretty good at it. Carlton Davis has five. Jalen Johnson has four. Taylor Rapp. Javon Holland and Lewisine each have two. Jordan Hicks and Troy Dye each with one. Uh, five catches allowed by Taylor Rapp. Again, I do believe that's against uh, LA's numbers. He's been pretty good here. Force fumbles. Lewisine has five. Uh, big news. We get him back as well after the break. Lewisine, five force fumbles. Uh, Javon Holland, Jordan Hicks, and Brian Asamoah each have fumbles as well. <clears throat> Recovered by Lewisine, Asamoah, Davis, Jalen Johnson, Daniil Hunter, Harrison Phillips, and Dalvin Tomlinson. Oh boy. No block kicks, no safeties, and only uh, three defensive touchdowns. Lewisine, Javon Holland, and Trayvon Diggs all pick sixes, except for Lewisine, which was a scoop and score on a fumble. I do believe in the Packer game. If I'm not mistaken, Greg Joseph, a year to forget. Ooh, 15 of 19, missing four field goals at a 78% clip, longest of 62. And then he missed two extra points, 92% completion percentage. And all those misses coming from 49 and beyond. So, oh boy. 53 t uh, kickoffs, 46 touchbacks. Played in all six games. Ryan Wright, the rookie punter, 12 punts, 524, netting 491, getting a good ROI there. And then three of them going inside the 20, longest punt of 48. Uh, kick return, Cordero Patterson has 40 kick returns, 917 yards, no touchdowns. Cordero Patterson has five punt returns, 35 yards, no touchdowns. KJ Osborne, four for 19. So there you have it. 
<clears throat> take a look at some team stats here before we get you out of here. Oh boy. All right, so the Vikings. In terms of total yards gained, we are third in the NFL behind the Chiefs and Ravens. We have 4,792 total yards gained, uh, 3,602 offensive yards. And that is split up between 2,733 pass, 869 run. Uh, points per game, we're averaging 44.2. Passing touchdowns, we got 22 split between the two quarterbacks on roster, and then seven rushing touchdowns with 217 first downs. Defensively, it is a different story for the Vikings. We are the 30th ranked defense, third worst in the NFL. Um, oh boy, we've allowed 3,669 yards. That is split up between 2,451 passing yards and 1,218 yards. We have allowed 299 points. I do believe that is third worst in the NFL. Yes, indeedy. Well, time for second, I guess, with the uh, Baltimore Ravens. We have 14 sacks. We are just about in the mid-range of the NFL. Oh, my heavens. Uh, seven fumble recoveries and 12 picks on defense. Conversion rates for your Minnesota Vikings six games into the season. We are... 64 of 113 third downs. That is 56% completion. Uh, actually, third down conversion percentage. And then 7 for 9 on fourth downs. 2 for 5 on 2 extra points. On uh, extra points, I mean. Uh, red zone efficiency. Let's see if we can find us. There we are. Third. <coughs> Excuse me. Jeez. We are third, eight, uh, fourth, rather, in red zone trips. We have 40 red zone trips now get this 21 offensive touchdowns and four field goals so we're missing a couple of trips there just operating at about half percentage of the time we're in the red zone we either score or not um red zone defensive trips 52 we have allowed 23 touchdowns and eight field goals so our red zone percentage on defense is 44%. And then penalties, we are among the least in the NFL, second least penalized team in the league. Seven penalties, 74 yards. Uh, turnovers, as we look at the take give, we are second worst in the NFL, tied with the Packers. Oh boy. Uh, minus eight in the take give. We have 27 turnovers and we uh, th have thrown 21 picks. And lost six fumbles we have 19 takeaways that is 12 interceptions on our defense and seven fumble recoveries so 27 and 12 that makes up the minus eight differential for your minnesota vikings oh my heavens we're going gonna go over how we got here we'll go to the team schedule please and we'll go to the preseason the preseason treated the vikings mediocrely we had a close loss to the raiders a four-point loss we come back, we beat the 49ers in the preseason, 44 to 41. And then we get utterly destroyed by the Broncos, only putting up three points. Broncos kept their starters in into the fourth quarter, and we uh, didn't play any starters. So mm, there, there you go. Uh, the regular season, Minnesota Vikings opened up against the Green Bay Packers. We had a six-point victory, 58 to 52. And then Monday Night Football, we go to the Eagles and have one of the better games of this season. A nail-biter, one-point victory, 39-38. to And we trail off and lose a couple against the Lions, 33-59. to And we lose to the Saints, or the Aints as we like to call them, by a field goal in London. So we come back, hometown team puts up a W against the Bears, and then we... Down big against the Dolphins and Andrew Anthony <clears throat> Morgan comes in and uh, he makes it look a little bit better on paper. Going forward, we are in the bye week. Second favorite game, uh, second favorite week of the of the season by Randy Replay. Next week's uh, tickets are still available. Standing room and upper level tickets are discounted for the fan appreciation game against the Cardinals. Minnesota will be wearing all purple. There will be roaming vendors. And uh, 
there will be roaming uh, little giveaways for the kiddos and for you. And be sure to get here three hours prior to game time. We got some stuff going out in the front court in front of the main swinging doors. And uh, it's going to be fun. So uh, fan appreciation day coming at you next week against the Cardinals. And uh, it's going to be a good game. Then we go to the possibly the worst place to play FedEx field because it's, it's so crappy. You want to get out of there as fast as you can. FedEx field will play host to the Vikings as we go against the Washington commanders. Then we travel over to Buffalo and play the bills. Then we're at home for two against the Cowboys. And then it's Thanksgiving already. My heavens. We play the Patriots Thanksgiving Eve, 8 20 PM kickoff, 7 20 central. Be sure to be there. And uh, happy Thanksgiving. And then we're playing against those gosh darn Jets. We have the Lions at home. And then we rattle off two against the Colts and the Giants at home. The Giants is Christmas Eve. Minnesota will be wearing their all-white uniforms. If you're coming out to the game, please wear all-white to that as well because it's going to be a winter whiteout here at U.S. Bank Stadium. Then the last two games of the season are at the Green Bay Packers. <clears throat> 325 kickoff and then in Chicago against those pesky, pesky bears. So that is it. Any replays by week extravaganza successful by any stretch of the imagination. The only thing we really didn't cover was the injury report. Um, never mind. I lied. We don't get Lewis seen back. We do get JJ back though for the next game. Jalen Naylor will still be out three weeks. With a dislocated ankle, and then Lewis Seen is still out four more weeks with that, excuse me, broken collarbone. So, oh boy, we'll see how those injuries progress. And uh, as we look forward to the NFL draft, Minnesota is in a pretty precarious situation. Amassing some picks this season. We have two ones, that is 26 and 27 overall as it sits right now, six games into the season. We are doing so well being a leader of the division and Dallas is doing pretty good. So we get back to back picks as it sits right now. We get a number two fifty eight overall. Then we get four third round selections, 76, 80, and 88, and then 90. So again, it all depends on what these three teams do here, Denver, Cincinnati, and Indianapolis, but uh, pretty grouped together. So no, uh, no telling what's going to happen there. And then we get a fourth round, 103 from Atlanta in the Kenny Wongwu Cordero Patterson trade. Um, and then we get three sixes, 176, 180, 189, and then two sevens, 209, and 222. So out of the, I think, 13, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 picks, Minnesota only owns three of them um, as their own. So. A lot of our pick selections will depend on what other teams do. Uh, the trade deadline will be coming up here post this uh, week. So up until, uh, I do believe, Tuesday at midnight will be the trade deadline. So next Tuesday, rather, at midnight will be the trade deadline. So that will be interesting to see. Uh, that's pretty much all I got. The Minnesota Vikings on top of the NFC North at a 3-3 were 500 and uh, looking to make a little playoff push here as uh, we got the Lions breathing down their necks at two and three. This has been Randy Replay. As always, I will see you in the next one.